Hey y'all, and welcome to part two of the Unseen Strands podcast. And like I said in part one, this is kind of more rambling than fiber content, so we're not going to do our normal intro since we've already done that. But I do cover some cakewalk information in the middle of this, so you may want to stay tuned and kind of follow along with that if you are participating in the Cakewalk Cal or have any interest in it, since that will be wrapping up fairly soon. But anyways, so here is part two of episode 19. Into the life. Yeah, so when I recorded uh, my last episode with the Lost Ring story, later that night, <laughs> which is kind of why I, I couldn't record again, because it, September was a month. I'm so glad for it to be done. Later that night, we had a lot of things that we were trying to cram in so that we could do everything, of course. Uh, we had to get the boys over to Taekwondo on Wednesday or Thursday so that they could get their final stripe for graduation on Saturday. So sorry, a little of the story that I left out yesterday was that my husband had a dentist appointment on Thursday, which is why we couldn't do stripe testing Thursday, which is why we were trying to cram it in on Wednesday. And my husband was on call that week, and he was having the one of the worst on-call weeks, <laughs> although I don't think it was too bad at that point. So on Wednesday night, we had to get to Taekwondo, and the boys started confirmation class which was also supposed to be the first day for this new choir thing that our church was doing. And so we we're hoping to make it to all of that. And we absolutely made it to none of it. Because whereas we did get dinner done <laughs> on our way to Taekwondo, we had decided to stop at Burger King, which is attached to a gas station. I'm going to leave the gas station's name out of this because my mom finds it absolutely hilarious and I, I don't want people to think I'm talking about something inappropriate. <laughs> um, it's, it's a and go name and it's, it's a funny word for the first uh, word of the gas station's name. But it's attached to this gas station and so we could get the Pepsi brand pop that we like to drink. We are Mountain Dew drinkers here. <laughs> And uh, since we wanted to get that, the Burger King's attached to it, so we had set Jeremy and Sam in to get drinks at the gas station, and my husband went to order food at Burger King, and of course, I get to sit in the car with the Littles. That's, that's why I don't get a lot of exercise, guys. I have to sit with the Littles, because getting both babies out of the car everywhere you go, it's just not a quick process. Uh, and Leo and Zane, well, they both won't leave shoes on. Zane is better about it, usually. He was better about it with sandals, but now that we're moving into shoe territory, he is actually worse about it, go figure. Um, but yeah, so we had, I get to sit with the littles, and so we got dinner in the car, and as we were on our way to Taekwondo, my husband nearly missed a huge accident, like a car, four, three or four cars up from him had suddenly stopped for no reason in the middle of the street, and he had to swerve to miss the car in front of him, and whereas we missed that car, and she even came back because we were, uh, we ended up with a lost tire. <laughs> Yeah, we hit the curve because this part of the road doesn't have a shoulder. It just has a really rough curb. And we had hit that and it blew up the tire on, or you know, the my side, passenger side front tire. So we were stranded on the road and she saw us still stranded there. And on the way back, she's like, I can't believe you missed me and I thank you so much for it. So she's like, it was totally not your fault. and. It was this car, I think she said it was three cars up from her, so that's why I said it was three or four cars up from us had just suddenly stopped and somehow everyone else, you know, missed it, but you know, we, 
ended up without a tire and yeah so we're stuck in rush hour on a very busy main road through the metro <laughs> and it was right over a right after the top of a hill which is why you know we get over the hill and then notice that you know we need to stop immediately and yeah i mean this is all stuff that i'm telling from my husband's perspective which he does still i think blame himself for it which is probably why he doesn't talk about it a lot uh because you know he still has the feeling if i was just paying attention that much more because we you know he's eating in the car and putting his stuff in the garbage bag actually when this happened so i i still think it is absolutely amazing and you know gas protection and everything that that's all that happened because it could have been so much worse and the fact that that was all that needed and then you know i didn't think of it immediately but i ended up calling one of my friends to come pick us up because she has a van it's my only friend actually well one of the two friends i have in the immediate area that could have saved us uh but yeah so i had her come and pick me and the boys up and take us back home so my husband could wait for the tow truck i'm sure he could have changed the tire himself but it was a really busy bad part of the road like there was countless times when he almost got hit you know being on the side of the road so we just didn't want to risk it and i don't know if he physically could have changed it there because like i said it is right up against a huge curb so yeah it, it would have been some doing in order to change the tire and get the spare out and everything anyways so yeah we just got it towed there was a tire place that was still open thank you firestone for being open till seven instead of six because even though this happened right before right around five o'clock we didn't get a tow truck till like six oh, well i think the tow truck said he got the dispatch at six it's like we had already been on the side of the road for nearly an hour then <laughs> waiting but yeah so i think my husband made it home with a new tire and no bit rim well we're not 100% sure that the rim isn't slightly bent because it, it's not holding air like it should be. He's had to fill it up twice now in the last two weeks, so like every Sunday he's filling it up. So yeah, we're not entirely sure that the rim isn't bent, but it's not a like emergency situation. So that in and of itself is, you know, thank you God, because yeah, the expenses of last month is just ridiculous coming off of end of summer and back to school shopping plus it's September's baby's birthdays and then the boys had graduation for Taekwondo which is 50 it's $50 together I believe so 25 bucks each and I can't even remember uh, not that we've done anything about my ring but that's you know an expense that weighs heavy on my heart plus there was the fact that i wanted a certain advent calendar that i needed to have ordered by september 15th so i had already gone ahead and ordered that before all this had happened and yeah it it was just such an expensive bad month for us that I'm, I'm so glad for it to be over um hopefully this month goes better <laughs> but yeah this month is my birthday month and yeah it's it's just kind of depressing i'm i'm totally on with zelda and feel her pain at least to my understanding love love it because of course you can't ever fully understand and feel other people's pain uh, but I do feel some of the pain for her. Uh, I've always kind of been that left out person when it comes to birthday. It's not that my family tries to leave me out, but I'm, I'm the one who moved away. And so 
I'm usually the one who is forgotten and it's yeah it's it's not that my husband doesn't try to make it special but we were so financially strapped for so long that is just not something that he could do a whole lot for and he knows that I would get mad at him for spending anything over normal money <laughs> so yeah he he knows better I mean he knows now that he's got a little more wiggle room but you know we had a rough month so yeah the the good part is is that since a yarn dyer was taking a break slash stopping dyeing I had gotten some stuff and when that came in the mail I gave him what I had ordered was a sweaters quantity and I gave it to him to and told him you guys can give this to me for my birthday <laughs> So yeah, that, that's the problem with me is I like to have very planned out gifts where I get what I want, but yeah, we try to go out, but with four kids, doing something special often doesn't end up actually being special for me because it's just so much of the kids think that they're more special than I am, <laughs> which, you know, it's, it's boys. They, they just don't get it that they're very selfish and yeah it's it gets stressful and it's not that the little ones are bad but they're little they're two I mean they still demand attention and then Sam is just rude I don't I don't even have any idea where that started from because when he was itty bitty he was just the most sharing baby you had ever seen like it was in his DNA and now he's he thinks he's being funny and it's just rude and disrespectful and you've tried to tell him that and he doesn't get it and it's like I don't know where you picked this up from because that's not us and Jeremy is just I don't know he's so self-absorbed it's just it gets stressful um, so yeah, I try to make my birthday special and I try to make it fun and this weekend or this year it's on a weekend, which normally would be awesome. And I was thinking that we were going to go visit my family for the weekend, but now the boys got invited to a birthday party and it's, you know, they don't get a lot of social interactions outside of school because I can't go anywhere. So I'm thinking that we'll probably end up going. How very rude, Mr. Phone, that nobody even bothered to say hello back. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's gonna go on for my birthday. Plus the fact that uh, my husband really, really wants to go to this haunted house thing. Well, it's it's the sleepy hollow and it's not just a haunted house you know set up thing not not like real ghosts like people acting <laughs> uh to scare you kind of situation but it's a whole like setup so it would be more comparable to like a universal thing on a much smaller scale uh not that it's a whole lot cheaper <laughs> but yeah he wants to go do that and he wants to be able to take Jeremy because he's not going to go alone and of course I would love to go with him but I have children <laughs> that can't go and yeah so that is like 30 bucks a person I think I don't know they, he said that the rates got really weird I think this year or I don't know if he was talking about that or something else but last year it was like 30 bucks for you to do all events and 25 to pick three and I don't know what the deal is this year but yeah so he was planning on taking Jeremy which again expensive <laughs> but he was gonna take Jeremy but this on this opening weekend because it opens this weekend but it's supposed to rain, although I thought it sounded like it was going to rain a whole lot more than it is. It's supposed to rain half an inch between today and tomorrow and up to an inch or another inch by Sunday. 
So I think it was only an inch and a half total, which is still a lot of rain, but that can fall in a really limited amount of time. So I'm not sure if it's going to be too wet for them to go, because originally, and this first half is supposed to be the lighter rain, uh, or at least the lighter amount, because they they kept saying how it was going to be heavy, heavy showers, and they kept ma giving you the assumption that it was going to be several inches of rain in this next week, and it sounds like it's going to be an inch and a half, maybe two. I'm like, yes, that's a lot of rain for one week, but it's October, and when rain happens in October, it tends to be like drizzly all day, and this sounds like it's going to be storms and, you know, just pour and be done, which is a lot more summery for here, but that's kind of the impression I was getting with what they were saying on the forecast, so I don't know. I, I told them I didn't think this weekend was going to work because of that rain. But now, listening to the forecast today, I don't know, it, it's still going to be on the fence. And so, yeah, they might be doing that. And then this weekend, I guess it actually starts today, is the LYS that I go to, or the Heartland Fiber Co. down in Winterset, Iowa, which is why I said it is not my local uh, LYS, because there is one in the exact opposite corner of the city I live in. Uh, that I've still yet to have been to, but it's the 10 year anniversary for the one down in Winterset, which is the one that I claim as my local yarn store. And so we'll have to go down for that. And I guess it started today. I thought it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because they are open on Sunday, I think, or it's the one over by me that's open. I don't remember. Everyone has to keep weird different hours, so um, I was looking at it yesterday, and it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, well, that's a noisy car, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the anniversary celebration, and Saturday is a trunk show with a whimsical yarn, I believe. I've never heard of this yarn brand before. They have some very interesting colorway names from what I could gather from looking at their website. So we're hoping to get over to Winterset for that. Of course, you can't go to a yarn store celebration without spending something of your own. So I'm hoping to get something, but again, even though it's birthday month, it's been an expensive birthday month. So yeah, not 100% sure that I'll be getting too much there. I mean, I know I won't be getting too much, but definitely won't be as happy of a birthday month as I would like to have. <laughs> but yeah, so anyways, that's just kind of what's going on here. And as I mentioned earlier, the cake walk is just about finished and wrapping up. Uh, we have, as of when I last checked, I believe there were 62 finished projects. Now, I haven't actually gone in and double-checked that with, you know, I don't know if some people had yarn pages connected separate from the actual project page, so it might be a few less than that. But still, there were, I think, 14 unique voices in the Ravelry thread. And yes, if you do want to be eligible for prizes in the Ravelry group, you do have to post in the Ravelry group. I just, I know I had gotten somebody who was not very familiar with Ravelry and they said something about they had posted in the Facebook group that will be for Ella's drawings. So my drawings are completely separate. Pretty much the thing that we have connected is that we're promoting it together and that it follows the same kind of timeline schedule. <laughs> so yeah, so if you are entered in on Ravelry, do make sure you also post on Facebook if you would also like to be eligible for Alice Prizes, as well as if you are posting on Facebook, do make sure that you come over and post on Ravelry so that you can be entered in on the Unseen Strands Ravelry group prizes. Uh, it's, it's not really that complicated to post project pages or project photos on Ravelry. I mean, I guess I'm a little more savvy 
tech savvy than the average person, but tech stuff is also very frustrating for me being the fact that I can't use your normal screen settings and things. So the fact that I can do it, I'm 99% positive all of you can figure it out if you do set down a minute to do it. Now the one thing, if you do have an Instagram account, you can link those project photos, or I guess those photos, into your comment post on Ravelry. So how I do it is I do everything on the desktop. I do not run Ravelry from an app or from my phone. So right there, I cannot help you on getting that stuff done because I don't do it. I don't know how. Internet pages in general are very difficult for me to work on my phone, so I just don't do it. Uh, but if you're in the Ravelry groups and you want to leave a comment, you just at the top of the page there'll be a little link that says leave leave a comment I don't remember what it actually says there's a little link you can click on it's at the very top like above the first post or reply to this thread I think that's what it says reply to thread uh, maybe it's not reply to thread I, I think thread is one of the last words but you click on that or you can reply to my original post it doesn't really make any difference to me how you do it because it'll leave a comment. The only difference is if you reply to the first comment, it'll tag me or, you know, send me a notification that somebody has replied. If you just click the other thing that opens the comment box that's not on the first post, it will not notify me that somebody has made a new comment because the other way it's like directly responding to that comment. And the other one is just commenting to the entire thread. If that makes any sense to you, it, it just, it doesn't really make a difference other than you can go, oh, this person's replying to this post, you know, and you can click on that and see what they're responding to other than just the entire thread. Um, but once you have clicked on that and it pops up the edit box, you can just hit this handy little control button on your computer keyboard and the G button and those two held together is opening the graphic pop-up so then it will ask you to either enter a link which will have a text box for you to enter the link into or there will be a few little options and one of those will be post a project picture or something so you can click on that and that will actually take you to your direct pictures like it'll have I think it's six so three on top three on bottom um, and you can just hit this other little button that's next you know so you can keep going back through your project photos but you can click on that which is how you get your direct project photos or you can go to Instagram and grab the link for your picture and put it in that original text box and hit the enter image button. I'm sorry, I can't remember the actual things that things are called and I should probably look, but I'm running short on time. So <laughs> those are probably the easiest ways I know of to actually attach the project photo onto the uh, Ravelry group. And of course, if you can't figure it out and totally give up, just send me a message with the link in it and I can probably figure out how to post it for you and give you the credit because I am going to go ahead and just pull the numbers out on my own and you know have a list of 1 through 62 instead of and I'm just using the 62 because that was the last number that I saw for unique projects that it was giving me for the thread and so I will just make a list of you know each person and I will double check that to make sure I know there was one person that was marked as a guest and so I did already go through and send them a message and they have already rejoined or joined I guess not rejoined because they weren't they were a guest and not a member uh, I had them I sent them a message and they joined so that they could be entered because you do have to be a member to qualify for the prizes because I want to be able to contact you and if you're just a guest I'm you know, it's going to be more difficult, I would imagine, for me to get a hold of you on Ravelry since that will be how I get a hold of you, I guess, if you don't get a hold of me first. Because unlike other podcasters, I will attempt to get a hold of you. 
Now, there's, of course, only so far I can go in actually getting a hold of you, but I'm not one of these people that are only going to announce winners in a podcast in visual format when people like me can't see it and try to search through comments to see who won. Because, <laughs> oh, there are so many of you that will have a photo or something and not actually any text or anything that says who wins. Not even in the description. I'm like, I get it that you ran out of time and you didn't want to do like a video or something, but why is it not in the description of who, for who won? Just like, I, I can't see your picture. <laughs> So yeah, if, if I don't hear from you within a week, probably, of what I get the prize winners actually posted, I probably will send you a message to make sure that you are aware that you have won something. I do need to actually go through and decide what I'm giving you guys. <laughs> oh, like I said, it's it's been a month. I mean, I know for sure we were going to have our yarn talk bag from Knit Picks, and it's one of the smaller, I don't, I, I want to say it's bigger than a sock bag, but probably smaller than some of the cake bags. I think you could fit a cake, but I don't know if you could fit the cake and much else in it. Uh, I will have a yarn cake, which is the candy shop, I think I want to say, colors. They were all the ones that were named after different candy names uh, that I made. I want to say it was the Razzle. I made my Kelsey shawl out of, which... FYI, I think I might frog. Oh, I feel bad. Because, yeah, that's Lacey's pattern. And I, I just, I don't think a asymmetrical shawl is for me. And I might frog that and make actually uh, a big button cowl out of. <laughs> um, so that's, I, I actually might, this is a big might. I'm thinking of adding, making a one of the prizes, what that yarn cake. And the big button cowl from the dabbling hook. Uh, I'm thinking of making that a prize and putting it together. And that, of course, will be a item I have purchased from Laurel. Uh, since I haven't mentioned this to her, but I'm thinking that's something I might do. Huh. I, I really would like to try and work up the pattern with that yarn first. But I think the only thing you would need is to make sure that it's got the proper length, which I haven't actually looked at my revised version of the pattern to see how long it needs to be. But I, I can't imagine it not working out if you don't just add some repeats or something. So I think that pattern or that yarn would work if you just kind of adapt it a little. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm thinking out loud, but I, I just think that that yarn would make a pretty cowl and that would be a way to do it. So I'm thinking that will be a pattern and then I have the yarn bag, the yarn talk bag, and I have a special stitch marker and I'm not sure. Oh, I have a tape measure thing that I've been saving for you guys. I, I honestly thought that the babies had broken your guys's. But I found the other one, and so the other one is the one that was your guys's because it has the stitch marker attached to it. So I was like, yay, it's not it's not the broken one. <laughs> and it's not that it's unuseful, it's, it has a key ring attachment and they broke the key ring part off. Which I actually thought of making into a new kind of key ring because the ring is still there, it's just not attached to the uh, tape measure anymore. But yeah, those those are just a couple of the prizes. I might just throw in another, I don't know, patterns, something, a couple other cakes. I still have those cupcakes I never did anything with. I don't know if I'm going to, so maybe I'll send those out. I don't know, guys. What else do you want? <laughs> another little edit in. I forgot to mention that I also have a pattern book of your choice from CC Allman, which is a knitting designer so I probably will look and try to match that prize up with someone who does knit so just another little prize FYI that I forgot about 
you know, I want to give back to you for being so awesome and participating with me and celebrating because, of course, it's cake because it's my birthday, right? We're ending on my birthday. Uh, <laughs> but finances are tight. We're going into Christmas <laughs> and everything had to fall apart last month. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm dreading, but it looked to me when I looked, there were 14 unique posts, like I said, or voices, and only one of the ones that it showed me was out of the country. So I'm thinking that I should be at least affordable if I end up having to send something overseas, which like I said, I might just do the yarn bag, the tape measure, and the stitch marker as one prize. And that way, if I have to send that overseas, I don't think I'll be hit with the patch package rate. Or I can just do the bag and the stitch marker because I know that definitely, but the tape measure is where it would get maybe a little bulky for envelope. Um, that's just what I'm thinking. But those should be thin enough that I wouldn't get dinged up with the package rate versus letter rate because letter rate is, oh my god, so much more affordable. Oh, also, another prize. If you're interested, I have the little cute die cuts that the boys can make or my husband can cut out, out of the Cricut. If you want any of those, I will totally put some die cuts, paper die cuts, into the prize for you if anyone's interested. I don't want to like offer them up and then nobody be interested. But what I was thinking is I have these cute mitten ones and these are a hand punch so it would be the boys that you, because I'd have to buy them for my own children. <laughs> but I have uh, mitten ones which would be a totally cute tag to add to anything uh, for Christmas gifts. Like you can totally write to from on them. I mean you'd have to have nice legible small writing or you could just write a name on them but I'll probably go ahead and punch the hole in to make them tags and that could would be an awesome little gift that I could send I also have just like they have circles signs there's all sorts of different uh, die cuts I guess I could let you pick which shape you want uh, a lot of them are in their Etsy shop but not all of them so if you wanted to just kind of browse it is Moe's Kids, which is M-O-E-S-K-I-D-Z dot Etsy dot com. Uh, that was another little, goodness gracious, what is with all the sound effects? That was just another little prize idea I had for you. I, I so wanted to give you guys more, and I, I really wanted to get, like there was a birthday cake hand-dyed yarn that I wanted to buy, and I, you know, all this other stuff. Oh, I have some other, I have some key rings. I'll sell some key rings, but each one of you can have one of those that I got from No Makers when she went out of business. Um, they're really cute, and I can make more of those if I have to, so that's that's absolutely no problem. Because uh, what they are is a key ring, and then it's got a miniature skein hank of yarn uh, just kind of wrapped around it, so it looks like a little thing of yarn yeah I, I totally need to add one of those to my purse because they're just so me but I I tried to not touch things but yeah we're getting down to the wire with that and I'm so so sorry I'm so rambly today but I, I just I wanted to talk to you guys and yet it's Leo has made things so very difficult <laughs> with his not wanting to be contained and I've had to be in his room because he will not stay in his bed which eats into a lot of my nap time and when he's out here I actually took apart the play yard that they had and now it is around my craft area I guess of the living room and I actually will be redoing this so that my computer is down towards the other end of it and all the other stuff is down towards the window side of it sorry I'm talking with my hands um, but that's a lot of moving things around and I've had this lovely respiratory issue and so I've been avoiding it I mean I put the gate up but I haven't done a lot more with it other than that but of course not having the play yard anymore means that Zane is no longer contained uh, which like I said before he's not so bad on his own but he likes to get into mischief if I'm messing with Leo 
So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just been a really busy uh, couple of weeks and a lot less crocheting is going to be get done now because I just, I can't, I can't have my hands tied up when I have to be on top of the littles, which is a thing I don't think my husband understands, even though, you know, this is number three and four for children for us. But, you know, when you're a visual person and your kid's misbehaving, you can look across the room and see them and yell at them. When you can't see, you have to be on top of them because you can't tell that they're misbehaving. You know, there's, of course, certain instances when it's very, very obvious, like they're in the wrong room. But sometimes it can be as easy as brother left their book bag in the living room and you don't know brother left their book bag in the living room and so you don't know what's there unless you are physically on top of that child and of course I have two that I have to be on top of yeah it's it's been interesting I, I it's gotten a lot better I, I will say that it is so much better than it was but it's it's still gonna be a struggle for another year two years before they actually get like more aware and uh, start paying attention <laughs> so wish me luck guys I I guess I really need to wrap this up and get moving you can find me on social media as either Mo's Crochet or Hooked on Mo's Mo's Crochet spelled M-O-E-S C-R-O-C-H-E-T and Hooked on Moe's is H-O-O-K-E-D-O-N-M-O-E-Z. And those are good for Etsy. Hooked on Moe's is good for Twitter and Facebook. Moe's Crochet is good for Pinterest, Instagram, Ravelry, and Goodreads. And yeah, guys, that's, I think that's going to do us this week. So... I'd appreciate it if you liked this episode, you would hook the like button and subscribe. Talk to you later, guys. Talk to me. Mario? What's on your shoes? What's on your shoes? Spider-Man. Don't walk on my hand. That's Alfie on Mommy. You say hi, Zane. Where's Zane? You there? He is. Where's Leo? <laughs> Where's Jeremy? <laughs> no, just a pile of clothes. <coughs>